old world? What's happening here? Bunty asked himself, trying to make sense of his history lesson. He realized that only one person could help him now, his grandfather. Having served in the Indian Navy, he had traveled the world and was also a history buff. Grandpa, I'm confused. My lessons are talking about the new world and the old world. I thought there was only one world. Can you help me with this? Bunty asked. Grandpa smiled at Bunty and took him to his study. Grandpa picked out an atlas and set it down on the table. He opened up the atlas and said, Till the end of the 15th century, people only knew about the continents of Africa, Europe and Asia. These lands are known as the Old World. Then what is the New World, Grandpa? asked Bunty. The New World refers to the Americans and includes North America, South America and the Caribbean Islands. But why are they called the New World, Grandpa? Please tell me more, said Bunty. The discovery of the New World is credited to the explorer Christopher Columbus. He was born on the 31st October 1451 in the Kingdom of Genoa, now a part of Italy. He grew up reading about the travels of Marco Polo and fell in love with the idea of exploration. Back then, everybody wanted to trade their goods with India and make their fortune. Really, Grandpa? Please tell me more, said Bunty. Columbus believed that by sailing west, one could reach India in less time. His intention was to find an alternate route to India. After spending a lot of time trying to convince Queen Isabella of Spain to fund his expedition, he finally set sail. She also promised to make him governor of any lands discovered along the way. He also got to keep 10% of what he would bring back. Finally, on August 3rd, 1492, Columbus set sail on his ship, the Santa Maria, and two smaller ships, the Pinta and the Santa Clara, and a crew of 87 men. Did Columbus find a new route to India? Columbus and his crew continued sailing and after 70 days at sea, they saw land. The crew shouted, Land ho! and celebrated. After enduring the hardship of being at sea, Columbus and his crew reached the Bahamas. He called it San Salvador. The natives were friendly and didn't oppose their arrival. But Grandpa, does this mean that Columbus never made it to India? No, Bunty, he didn't. Columbus landed in an undiscovered stretch of land between Europe and Asia. This was the first time that Europeans had set foot there. Columbus had discovered the New World, the continents of North and South America. On 28th October 1492, Columbus's ships reached the shores of Cuba and on the 5th of December, they reached the shores of Hispaniola. Then on the 13th of January the following year, Columbus and his men reached the Samana Peninsula in the Dominical Republic. The natives weren't as friendly as the ones they had encountered so far. What happened there, Grandpa? asked Bunty. They battled and while Columbus lost a few men, he managed to capture a few of the natives. On board the Santa Clara, Columbus began his journey back to Spain. What did Columbus do after coming back, Grandpa? asked Bunty. Did he make more voyages? But on the 14th of September, 1493, Columbus made a second trip. He took 17 ships with 1,200 sailors, farmers, workers and soldiers. They discovered many more islands and colonized them under the Spanish flag. Was this Columbus's last trip, Grandpa? asked Bunty. No, it wasn't. Columbus made three more trips in 1498, 1502 and 1504. I'm sure Columbus must have become a very rich man, Grandpa, said Bunty. Sadly, neither did Columbus manage to bring back enough gold or precious jewellery to find the royal treasury, nor did he bring back any spices. Then what happened to him, Grandpa? asked Bunty. The Spanish crown was very unhappy. All his money was taken away to pay for the cost of his expedition. Penniless and overcome with disease, this once great explorer breathed his last on the 20th of May 1506 in the town of Valladolid in Spain. That's so sad, said Bunty. What is worse is, 
that till his death, everybody, including Columbus, believed he had discovered a part of Asia. When did people realize that he had discovered new land? Asked Panti. Amerigo Vespucci was an Italian businessman who wanted to develop Columbus's discoveries. In 1499, he proved that the lands Columbus had discovered weren't a part of Asia, but a part of a new world. Several explorations by others further proved this fact, and the continents were named after him. Bunty was left in awe, and he tried to trace the routes the explorers may have taken on the atlas. Bunty had learned everything about the new world from his grandpa.